All right, this is part three of my screen mirroring project. Uh, let's just chalk it up to being a failure. Um, that hundred dollar solution I was hoping to have come up with um, just couldn't get it to work. Um, so <clears throat> I'm all about how do I piece this together now on a budget. So to start with, Chromecast go for thirty some odd dollars. With what I'm going to show here. You don't necessarily have to build that sync on green conversion uh, circuit I built. But if you do do that, you're going to have a much higher quality input into this uh, next thing I'm about to show. So anyway, for now this video series, number three is going to be about uh, setting up a reverse camera. So I bought this really cheap eBay, or sorry, uh, Amazon uh, reverse camera that goes on your license plate lights. And... Uh, that's your part number there. Literally, Amazon Prime, twelve dollars and thirty something cents shipped to my door. Not expecting it to be junk, but you know we're on a budget. Old car, trying to do this on the cheap. So this series, this video is going to be about how to set up a a cheap e reverse camera on your E90 or E92. So that's the camera itself. Comes with the power. You know, if you want to set up that uh, your your uh, camera input here, your power input right there, and then it comes with a composite video cable. So today, this video is going to be about installing this. Next part of this series is going to be about this. So this is what I end up buying: um, 180 pounds or to my door delivered, it was just uh, two, about 2.30. Um, American delivered to my door. Came in about five business days. That's not bad, actually. These things have come down quite a bit. If you search for this part number online, they naturally go for a lot more with the picture-on-picture -picture feature. But basically, even though this video is going to be about setting up a reverse camera, uh, you may want to skip ahead in the video because this is a series of... This is a video series of me showing how to uh, set up a screen mirroring on my car for as cheap as possible. So this is obviously somebody else's package, nicely packaged solution for E60s, E65s, E90s, E70s, etc. Came out a number of years ago. They used to cost a lot more, but all I noticed is a bunch of different companies uh, selling the same video interface here. The B PIP dash BM dash one 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 zero dash zero zero eight. But this company X Car Link actually is selling it for a good price. So let's see how this all goes. I'll probably end up recommending them. So you get this actual module inside the box. It's gonna come with your instructions. It's going to come with this. It's a little initial setup circuit board to help you set all your defaults. And then you get a number of video cables. So, to start, this is for con this is the harness that allows you to control, connects to this. You're going to get this. Normally anybody that would buy this would just, you know, take the quality degradation and work with a composite input. There's a number of inputs you can put here, like a gaming console, etc. Um, one of these is going to be for my reverse camera input. And that just goes on to the actual uh, box. So I would say everybody does this. Right? Uh, they use these composite video inputs. And, they, you know, the quality is going to get thoroughly degraded. So that little board... That little box that I built in number two is actually going to be very useful to me here because I can use this harness, which is an RGB harness, red, green, blue. So I can feed the colors individually, and this box supports RGB or this is version four. So it's, and, and you can either feed it RGB white with white sync or sync on green. So I'm all set. I can just take those basically the inputs off that, that module I built, disregard the white, I have red, green and blue and black that I'm going to use. So I will have a much sharper picture, a much better quality going from the Chromecast 
into this box by using this harness and so it wasn't a waste what I've done thus far so I'm not too upset about it that is your uh, reverse camera reverse camera power supply just so you can give it power right from the actual box then you have a little function button that you can mount on the bottom of your steering column this is the main power input harness and lastly you got your connector that goes to your LCD display on the car it's a nice kit definitely definitely full everything you need it's a good value and what initially started all this was me trying to find a really cheap way to allow people to screen mirror and I tried as I might I couldn't uh, I couldn't emulate uh, I couldn't get it done but now basically so this is 230 delivered this is 12 some odd dollars so that's around 240 and change that circuit I built um, not necessary in this case but it's going to help with maintaining quality that's uh, you know if I really did it on a budget or tried to find the cheapest way to do it I could have done it for much less but for my instance I paid about 50 60 dollars with that box so let's say we're at around 300 plus the cost of the Chromecast 330 and I'll have a nice solution here um, that allows me to mirror my smartphone there are kits out there that allow like integrating with boxes like these there's other companies out there that will make you like a, a ready-to-go solution that would require professional installation but will allow you to screen mirror or Apple AirPlay um, or, or screencast with an Android your setup but I think you'd end up you know paying about 600 bucks by the time you're all done maybe 550 to 600 bucks it's relatively new it's pretty popular but I'm how I'm already invested in this and if I end up doing this for 300 and change just over and having the functionality I have a second gen Chromecast. Could be a nice solution. So, you know, overall what I've spent versus what I'll get, I'm not I'm not too upset and pretty happy with that. And that's what that will that's what the series will be about. Either just to show you how this all works or to show you how to set up uh, your own uh, picture and picturing your own uh, screen mirroring setup, piecing it together like this with a reverse camera and everything for about 300 and change not bad so now we're going to move on to uh, trying to install the reverse camera on the car this is a very generic one i'm expecting some problems but you know one last thing i didn't show with the reverse camera is it comes with a foam basket so we'll be using that too so for now let's get back over to the car and uh, start installing so we're going to install this on the left side So to get in there, to release it, I just basically stuck a screwdriver in here and it just popped off. So I'm left with this. It already has its own gasket. So let's go compare that to the, to the piece that we bought. So here's our comparison. Looks like it should be fine, it should work. So there's a power and video feed from the camera itself. And this is just our power for the LEDs. So we gotta find a way to set up pins on here to go inside there. So before um, getting into all that, I'm going to remove this cover here so that we can focus on um, routing the wires after. So basically you got a bunch of uh, clips here, just use your panel trim removal tool, pull forward gently, once you pull forward enough it will come out, there's a number of these on the actual there's a second one. Third. Fourth. 
I'm gonna take this out. So that comes off like that, and then you gotta rock this. We're gonna have to do that two handed, but. Basically rotate it this way. I removed that. There was the four at the top, four at the bottom. This just dropped out of the way. There it is right there. To get this out, it was into this here. You basically push from here, push away so that you can snap it out. This piece snaps out of there. So I figured, let's do that so that once we actually route the cable, I'll have to find access from here, but basically, I got that light out. You gotta route the video cables and whatnot. You gotta run them uh, down there, but first I gotta set up uh, the ground and power into here, so I'm gonna get a couple pins to insert into there. I have these leftover Adreno jumper wires from my install, so I'd like to make put these put these to use. So basically, these should slide right in. I can just do that and then run some uh, tape around there to secure that permanently. So basically, what I got to do is just basically set these wires up onto the. Camera input. I want to set up that gasket now. This one here. So I got these uh, jumper pins set up now. I made. Uh, Blue positive and gray ground. And I got a heat piece of heat shrink too. Just slide over the connector after to hold it all in place. Feed these inside the car. I'm not sure what they'll end up exactly, but. I 
I got it to engage. I'm gonna try snapping it in. Okay. I had to use some of that adhesive sticker, the paper that was on top, to actually guide it into place. But that wasn't too bad. And before anything, I want to test the LEDs on it. exact match to what I have on there but not terrible workable similar in brightness just a bit brighter I would say but definitely workable let's close it up and see how it works Well, that went well enough though, it snapped into place and seals fine. So that's uh let's get working on right routing all the wiring to the front. So here we are on the inside. So there's this little space here, this little relief that you can tuck it into right here. So there's two ways you can power up this camera and you can even tell that video interface module how you want to do it. You can either do it by running this all the way, this power to the, to the actual camera all the way up to the front of the car and feeding into one of the inputs and let it be powered by the actual video module or you can just tell it by the way I'm going to wire into my reverse lights to do that. So rather than try to figure out and buy wire and run this all the way to the front I'd much rather just tie into the reverse lights. There's a harness right here. So what I'm going to do is get a multimeter and see which one of these two pins become active when uh, when, um, when the reverse lights are on. So I'm going to do that before I run that video wire. Right now I have it on, on what I suspect to be the reverse lights, but I'm going to try right now. So just to start with if I unlock the car, it's going to activate the welcome lights and uh, the LED strip. And so 
So that obviously didn't do it. I'm going to put the key on, put it in reverse, and we'll see. See, I'm in reverse now, but I don't know if it's a, I'm going to get a CAN bus cut out. That didn't work. Yeah, that's not working, so let me plug it in. My reverse light's on. Let's focus up here now. Okay. So I'm getting reverse lights on positive black, negative brown. So I'm going to turn, take it out of reverse, see if that voltage goes away. It's in park now. Voltage gone. So I got my battery voltage on those two pins. So it's gonna be it's these two pins here, left and right. So black is positive, brown is negative for reverse light. So I'm gonna tie into that now. One way I wanna to try to tie pin in a clean way is to just insert a pick on the side here and here. And I can lift this. Then I can pull the actual piece up, and then I can basically just wrap it around here, and then have a nice clean tie-in. So I'm going to do that now. So I ran a quick uh, solder blob on each one of these so I can make sure those wires stay secure. Putting the negative and the positive. Be nice and clean. Feeds right in there. And then you won't even you don't have to cut up the wires or anything like that. So now I'm just gonna cable manage this. I cable manage this part and then we'll feed the video cable through. So I have the following setup. I just gently passed a piece of metal or wire through here. And what I want to do is just tape this here. And using the electrical tape and just hope it pulls all the way through clean. So we'll try that now. I'm gonna try silicone lube. Try some silicone lube. I got something with a bit of a hook on the end now, so it won't just as easily pull out. I'm feeding it through. So I got it through. It was a bit of a bitch to do, but got it done.
There's a lot of pressure at this point here. I think I'm going to wrap that wire. Just in a bit of electrical tape. Give it that added layer of protection. So here's what we're left with on the outside. Put the. I never even noticed that it was there before. I put the cover back on, and I actually just put a tiny little slit here just to give this cable some relief so it doesn't get pinched on. So that's the only way you'll be able to see anything. And now I have this cable sitting here waiting to go into the interior of the car. So I'm gonna go after that next. So here we are on the inside. This car doesn't have folding seats, so I don't have an easy way to route over there, but I will try to fish this over and then once I once I do that I'll tell you guys the route I take. So I don't have folding seats, I believe on my car I'm going to have to pull the rear seat bottom out. You just basically give it a tug to get the, to get access to where I need to be. Took quite a bit of quite a bit of pressure to get the seats out. You always find money when you when you go into your couch or your, your seats of your car. Let's see how much money I'm gonna make. That's a quarter. You got, I don't know what that is. Another five cents. Check it out. A toonie. I took this car to Canada once. I guess, uh, I don't think this car was ever to Canada without me, so. Sweet, two bucks. Two dollars and thirty cents. Alright, so I'm gonna go see if I can find a way to get access. So here's what I did. I removed these three clips here. They were holding this piece in. I stuck a light in there so that I can see the light passing through here. I got a little pry tool and basically just stuck this wire through the hole. I'm going to tape the wire on it and pull it down through here, down here. So that's going to be the easiest way. It would, if you did that, you wouldn't even need to remove your rear seat at all. I just did it because. I thought I'd be pulling this whole piece out, but I found an easier way now. If you had folding rear seats, it'd make it so much easier. You know that little piece that I found? It was actually for here. So I got to fix my, my little sunshades. That's kind of nice. So I'm going to pull that wire through now. So it's going to be a bit tricky, but I'll start pulling that wire through. I need my little pry tool to get a look in there. So I'll go clean up the trunk area and then we're out to the front. Clip locations. We got one here. We have one there. We have one behind. And you got one over there. Over there. That's how I got this cover moved out of the way enough to stick a light there and find a hole to feed to the front. So we're done in the trunk. Now it's probably a good thing that I got the rear seat removed so I can get to this cover and pop this cover off and stick the wire underneath it so I'll do that now. So I'm going to use this tool.
clicks into place right here. It snaps onto these guys here. So now on the inside of the weather strip. I can start rotating this. So I'm going to run it here. Under this carpet. And to get it to the front, I don't have to, I can just shove it underneath this uh, A-pillar here. I don't have to remove it just to get it up to the front and get it looking clean just by tucking it in. Actually, it's completely tucked in and I'll deal with it up at the front. For now, I'm going to restore this piece and put the back seat back. Okay, before trying to snap this back into place, you're going to want to pull all these clips out of there using a pair of vice grips, just pull them out and insert them back into this piece before you try to snap them into place. Just a little tip. That's back in place. I'm gonna put the back seat in now. All right. In order to get it up to under the dash, so we can route it into the video module. Like I said, all I gotta do is just tuck it underneath here. Gets it out of the way. It's safe. It's not getting pinched or anything. I'm sure some videos will tell you take all this trim out and and. Uh, Rat it under the carpet, etc. But this is easy enough. Tucked in there clean. So that does it then. All I gotta do is just route this up underneath these lower panels and feed it into the input of the video module. So I'm done on this video for now. Once I have everything set up, just to conclude this video, I'm gonna show how it all works out. But I'm done on the installation part for the most part now.